we're going to be discussing mathematical models. So what exactly is a mathematical model? So a mathematical model is simply a mathematical description of a real life problem. So a model that is able to represent change clearly, that is able to represent a real life problem in the mathematical, mathematical, mathematical form is said to have fidelity. So now our main focus is going to be on mathematical models. So the first model which I want us to look at will be to model change, right? So it's what, it's what we are interested in, modeling change. So let's say um, you are going to school and your, your parents give you 100 rand per day. And they say to you, if you behave yourself every day, they will increase the amount the amount by 50%. Obviously, that, that wouldn't happen in real life, right? Well, it can, but I mean, I can't just say today I'm giving you 100, tomorrow I'm going to give you um, half of 100 plus 100, the following day, so on and so on. No. Um, this is just for illustration purpose. So, how can I represent how much I'm going to have on Saturday? So how much will you get on Saturday? Well, we're going to do it in two ways. The first way will be to do it manually. And then the second way will be to use modeling. So how will I do this manually? Well, there's something to understand here. Now, let me say I'm at step number one. And then there's a, a bridge here. Let's say this is a bridge. And there's step number three. Let's say the bridge is on step number two. Well, if I'm standing here, this is my initial step. And this is my final step. I must be here. How do I get from position one? Sorry for that. So how do I get from position one to position two? I must move, right? So there's going to be change in displacement. Well, the value at position one is equal to the value of position one plus some change that we went through. Right. So the value of, um, of position two rather, sorry, the value of position two is going to be the value of the first step plus the change that I went through. So for me to move from position one to position two, how much do I, what position am I at position two? Is the sum of the position one plus some change that I went through. So every model like this one can be represented in, in this form. The next step is equal to the previous step plus change in previous step. Okay, it might not make sense, but it will make sense as we represent it mathematically. Well, we can write this thing as a n plus one is equal to a n plus a n multiplied by some change. Well, I give you 100 today. Tomorrow, I'm going to increase it by 50%. Right. This value here will be my change, x, and this will be my initial amount. The initial amount is constant, it's fixed. It won't change, right? So now, how can we model this change? Well, I'm going to write days of the week, right? So let's say this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday. My aim is to find out how much am I going to get on Saturday, right? 
Well, on Monday, they give you 100. This is the starting amount. On Tuesday, they are going to take the f that amount, they multiply it by half, and they add the previous amount, which is 100. Then how much do you get there? Half of 100 is 50. 50 plus 100 is 150. So on Tuesday, you're going to get 150. Given that you, you behave, right? Then on Wednesday, I'm going to take the previous amount again. I multiplied by a half and I add the previous amount. The previous amount is no longer 100, it's now 150. So it changes after each and every step. Then what do we have? I'm going to have 2 to 5. Meaning on Wednesday, you're going to get 2 to 5. On Thursday, I'll take the previous amount, which is now 2 to 5. I multiply it by half, and I add that the very same amount. Now let's see what we get. I'm going to get 337.5. I'll do the same thing for Friday. I take the previous amount, I half it, and I add that very same amount. Now let's see what we get. I'm going to get 506.25. If I do the same thing on Saturday, let's see how much we have on Saturday. What I'm going to have is 759.38. Right. So, meaning on Saturday, you're going to have 759.38, starting from 100. So, what's happening here? What's happening here is that we take the amount, the previous amount, we multiply it by the change, and we add that very same previous amount. Then we get the next term. Well, obviously, if I said to you, do this for 480 days, how many papers are you going to take to fill up this thing? So that won't be a, a clever move. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to derive a formula, a mathematical formula or a mathematical description, which will be our model to be able to illustrate the change that is happening. So now let's see what we said here. We said that um, an plus 1, is equal to a n plus a n multiplied by some change, right? So we always have something called initial value. Initial value is represented by the subscript zero. In this case, our change is going to be x. Well, I'm going to define values of n. I'm going to go from n equal to 1 up until n equal to 4. Uh, from n equal to 0 to n equal to 4. Now, when n is equal to 0, what I have here is a sub 0 plus 1 equal to a sub 0 plus a sub 0 multiplied by x, which reduces to what? a sub 1 is equal to a sub 0. If you take out a sub 0 as a common factor, you have 1 plus x. Now, this, this will be your, your first value of a sub 1. Right. Now, let's let n be equal to 1 this time. In the same formula, a sub 1 plus 1 is equal to a sub 1 plus a sub 1 multiplied by the change. Of which this reduces to what? a sub 2 equal to, I can take out a sub 1 as a common factor like I did before, a sub 1 multiplied by 1 plus x. Right. But now, look what's happening here. I know what is a sub 1. I solved it in the previous step. So I'm going to take this a sub 1 and I put it on the space of a sub 1 on the next step. Now, what am I going to get? I'm going to have a sub 2 is equal to a sub 1 is given by a sub 0 multiplied by 1 plus x multiplied by 1 plus x. So this part here is a sub um, 1. Okay. So if I do this, I'm going to get a sub 2 equal to a sub 0. You know, if I multiply this bracket twice, it's going to be 1 plus x to the power of 2. Now I know the value for a sub 2 in terms of the initial amount. So my aim is to write each and every term in, in terms of the initial amount. So now, what if we let n to be equal to 2? I'm going to have a sub 2 plus 1 equal to a sub 2 plus a sub 2 multiplied by some change in x. 
So this is going to be a sub 3 equal to, I can check out a sub 2 as a common factor. I'm going to have a sub 2 multiplied by 1 plus x. Now, I know the value for a sub 2. I found it in the previous step. I'll do the same thing. I'll take this a sub 2 and I put it on the space for a sub 2 on a3. So therefore, a3 is equal to a sub 2 is given by what? It's given by a naught multiplied by 1 plus x squared. And this being, is being multiplied to 1 plus x. Well, I'm multiplying this bracket, um, the squared and the 1. So I add the exponents. So this means that a sub 3 is going to be a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of 3. Well, this is my a sub 3. Okay, then now let's go for n equal to 3. So when n is equal to 3, I'm going to replace n equal to 3 in this expression over here. Right, so a sub 3 plus 1 is going to be a. 3 plus 1 is equal to a sub 3 plus a sub 3 multiplied by x, where x is the change. Now a 3 plus 1 is going to be a sub 4 is equal to a sub 3 multiplied by 1 plus x after factoring out a sub 3. Well, I know a sub 3 from the previous step. I'll do the same thing, right? So now a sub 4, if you put a sub 3 in this thing, you must end up with a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of 4, right? So now I've got the terms here. I've got a sub naught is equal to a sub naught, right? This is valid. 3 is equal to 3. Now, nothing wrong with saying 4 equal to 4, right? So a naught equal to a naught. A sub 1 equal to what? Now, what's the value for a sub 1? a sub 1 is a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x. a sub 2, we said it was a naught multiplied by 1 plus x, all squared. And a sub 3, we said it's a naught 1 plus x to the power of 3. Then a sub 4 is equal to a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of 4. Well, here, I can also say 1 plus x to the power of 0. Won't change anything, right? Remember, if I raise a number to the power of 0, it just becomes 1. Well, what I need us to do, the most important thing is to spot what kind of change I will observe in here. When here is 0, there is 0. When here is 1, there is 1. Right, there's a 1 there. When here is 2, here is 2. When here is 3, here is 3. When we have 4 here, we've got 4 here. But this value here is not changing. So I can rewrite this thing for n number of steps. Well, I can go all the way for n steps, which I don't know how many will be, right? Then I'm going to have a sub n equal to a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of n. Well, I want to know how much will I have on a Saturday. But your first term was 0. This means that your, your first Okay, so the first term, we got the first term by letting n to be equal to 0, right? You see this? This means that for you to find, um, from Monday to Saturday, from Monday to Saturday, counting from 0, is 0 to 5, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This was our initial step. If 1 was our initial step, then our last step will be 6. But because 0 is our initial step, our last step is at 5. Well, for us to find how much we are going to have on Saturday, we have to evaluate a sub 5. So a sub 5 will be equal to a sub naught multiplied by 1 plus x to the power of 5. Well, what is our a naught again? Our a naught, we said it was 100 and our x was 50%, which is also equal to 0 0.5. Well, let's see how much am I going to have on Saturday, which is a 5. It's going to be 100 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.5 to the power of 5. Well, how much do I get there? Let's put that on the calculator. 100 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.5 to the power of 5. And we get 759.38. Well, now if you check this value here, it's the value that we'll have on Saturday. Going back to what we did at first when we did it manually, that's what we also got. So basically, what a mathematical modeling equation or formula will do 
it will allow you to spot a change on how your your on how the change is happening and then you will be able to generalize um the change for any value of n so basically i can even tell you how much you are going to have on the 798 day if they continue keeping the same thing right just gonna replace the n with 78 and resolve the new amount which is a798 so this is how you can model change so the biggest thing to do here is to spot change so expand that that um like we did here you must expand this thing okay don't memorize this formula because it might change if um i add that number then i also remove the number so we're going to do that in the next lesson on how we, um, the model can be adjusted for when we're also removing an amount from the previous amount so thank you for watching